Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Testing. Are we getting any echo? Echo. Start your show now, press 1. To hear important instructions, press 2. To speak to customer service, press... Your show will go live in 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on? What's going on? Let's go get in here. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. What's going on? New Brunswick in the house. Toronto, what's good? Arlington. 
South Bend. What's up? Patterson. Oh. We got Paris in the house. Shout out to the Jedi Mac from way back. trials a game right see you don't always have to wear jeans you don't always have to wear jeans just throwing on some trousers can really up your game batissimo in the house thank you batissimo batissimo is my chat bot that's regulating the chat room batissimo comes through and makes sure he greets everybody says what's up to folks that's what's up that's Batissimo's job Batissimo just makes sure when I'm doing what I'm doing and he says hi how you living what's good now I'm gonna tell tonight I'm gonna tell you right now it might be some hurt feelings tonight but it's not intended to hurt your feelings. The code is sick, right? Yeah, sick. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, man, this thing is like a, a big sweater that just hangs well and just does what it's supposed to do. Uh, good evening. So, I need to check some volume right here. Um, I'm going to do a sound check. Sound check. Donnell, Jedi, let me know how I sound right now. My mic sounds nice. Check one. My mic sounds nice. Check two. Next sound test. My mic sounds nice. Check one. My mic sounds nice. Check two. Need to hear which sounded best. second one sounded better that's what I thought the second one sounded better that's what I thought all right so here we're gonna get into it uh, I need to monitor through oh no let's not let's not do that okay so what I need to do is See what's going on here. Um, we'll monitor audio through the Scarlet output. Okay, so now I got. All right, so less room noise in a second. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let me get back into this. We got. Newark in the house. Good evening, fellow CIA men. Loud and clear. Louisville in the house. The coat, the jacket I'm yeah, the jacket I'm rocking works well with the nice the climate on the East Coast. Bring the pain on all of us, make us stronger. So this is what we're gonna get into, guys. All right. So fellas, here's what we're gonna do before we get started. The link that I just put in your description. That is the link that all patrons use, 
all CIA men, all modern savages use. When you want to get your comment read, when you want to donate to the channel, we use the link. Here's what the difference between the link uh, and everything else. The link bypasses YouTube. YouTube takes that 30% uh, and the link allows you to bypass that 30% plus YouTube holds your money for 60 days. Yeah, so let's say if you were to donate something, right? It wouldn't get actually to me until February and they would tax it. So that's what we're doing. That is what we're doing. That is what we're doing. You can use your PayPal information. You can use your debit card. You can set it up any way you want to. You set it and forget it. And the thing I love about that is I'm about to actually, like Angry Man has his battery. I'm about to throw up my uh, my thing on my channel uh, so we can actually, I'm doing things with different stream goals and everything else. I'm about to go back to the green screen uh, and do some other things like that. Um, so more things coming. Um, so that's the difference. You know, I appreciate that everybody uses super chat, but just know this. You just, you, I put it up there as an option for new people, but my, my regular folks need to use the link. The link is here and the moderators can put the, put the link up in as much as they want to. Who is this guy? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and, uh, whoever it is. Film person is, I don't know you, so I'm going to go ahead and help you out. You can just go ahead. I don't even want to have waste time with folks like that. Moderators, your job is going to be just this. When folks come into the chat room, let them rock out. Even if they got something that's different to say. But here's what we're going to start doing. In the chat room, we need to be talking about the topic. If you see people coming in and they start to talk about, hey man, did you see the football game or or, or this or that, and they starting to take the topic, the, the chat room off topic, what I need the moderators to do is they need you to remove that comment and then kindly remind the chatter, hey, please try to keep it on, on, on topic. Now, if they just make one comment, that's fine, but sometimes people come in and they just want to be heard. They don't have a channel. What's up, David? They don't have their own channel, so a lot of times folks want to come over to chat rooms like this and just make our channels theirs. That's number one. You know, let them say what they got to say. But if somebody comes in and they're just off the rack, rude, and that kind of stuff, put them in timeout. Put them in timeout, and I'll see they've been put in timeout. And if I decide to ban them, I will ban them. I'm going to do all the banning so you can put folks in timeout. Somebody's breaking Tuition the rules. Paid. That's what's up. You, somebody, you see somebody keep breaking the rules between you and Bottissimo? It should catch it. Um, so let's go rock from there. As far as the jacket, gentlemen, this jacket is what's called, you hear me talking about uh, pea coats. This is a pea coat kind of mixed with a car coat, mixed with a cardigan sweater. Honestly, this is one of the most comfortable pieces I own. Love this stuff. Now, tonight, I'm going to tell you right now, I am going to go in. I am going to go in, but it's going in like your, like your, like your older brother, like your older brother or your uncle. I'm not going to say your daddy, but I'm going to say your older brother or your uncle, somebody that you respect and you know, they got the right to tell you something. Because they're not telling you something to hurt you. They're telling you something to help you. You just might not want to hear it. So for all my sensitive souls, for, for, for people who want to, you know, who just, uh, who, who don't like, um, you know, being told something's off, something's wrong, you know, this might not be the broadcast for you, but for all my dudes who are really trying to take their life to the next level, honestly want to get better. We got to do this. All right. Before we get started, I'm going to have you guys check this out too. Check out the glasses. I've converted my uh, old black reading glasses. I got a new pair of, of black readers. So this is that chunky, big, I like, I've been looking for one. And then this one right here. 
These are killer, man. Ah, been looking for the right crystal pair. Uh, so here's what we're going to do, guys. You see the title of the stream. Now, I got to ask you, you gentlemen a question. And this is good. We're in class. Guys, hit the like button. We got 104 people watching, 33 likes. We can't get started until we until we get at least up to 70 likes or, or dislikes. Whatever. We got to get up to, we got to have at least 70%. Actually, I want 80, but let's go. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Come on, man. Hit the like button. Come on. Like button. Come on, guys. Hit the like button. Get it up there. Get Keep it up, up there. the very informative information. There we go. There we go. Hit the like button. What's going on, Jeff? What's up, King Holder? Beast Mode Sykes in the house. We're getting there. We're close. We're up to 50. We're halfway there, man. We're halfway there. Now, we can't get started until we get to at least 80%. So, I'm going to just fall back until folks hit the chat. Until uh, Likes are free, dudes. And I know YouTube, especially on the mobile, kind of get to tripping. When you launch your uh, the live stream, the chat comes up. So, you got to minimize the chat and go back and hit the like. I know. But it counts. Some of your brothers may not know. Some of your fellow CIA brothers may not know the live stream is going. So, by hitting the like... It lets them know get that notification gets out. All right. Shout out to Ron Brown. What's up, Kyle? Ron Brown in the house. Appreciate you, fam. Derek, what's going on? Frontline, what's up? Remember, guys, use the link. Uh, use the link. Use the link. Use the link. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, we got to get it. We just got a little bit more. We got to only need 10 more before we can get started. I know these frames are crazy, right? These are crystal these are crystal finding the right crystal frame when i do the unboxing on these and um i just had a custom suit actually it came in yeah it's a good time of year all right so here's where we're at guys fam what's up kev coming to you live from the Brayton area for the first time what's going on Brayton? appreciate it so here's what we, thank you ron so let me ask you a question, gentlemen, like your big brother, like your uncle, let me ask you, fam, real talk, how do you rank among other men? What's going on, Remington? Do me a favor, man. Uh, put my name in the highlights like that. Uh, do me a favor. Appreciate the shout out, uh, but that highlights me and it kind of takes my attention away. However, if you if you're trying to get my uh, attention to like um, read your question or, or comment, that's what the uh, super chats for. But that's appreciated, Remington. That's what's up. Okay, ask yourself, dudes. Let me go ahead and put on my, you know, let me go ahead and put on my my uncle glasses. Guys, what do you rank? Yeah, these are Dita. You are damn right, they're Dita. These are Dita and these are Jock Mirage. What do you rank? What do you rank around other males of the Half of the population, where do you rank? And when was the last time you checked your ranking? See, hold up. I know right there that a lot of you guys are like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know where I rank. I feel like I'm pretty good. Or I feel like, you know, you kind of, you intuitively, a lot of dudes kind of think they know. But that's the problem. Okay. Dev, uh, Devlin, okay. Healthy, okay. So for the guys who stay there lower at the bottom, this this is going to hurt. This stream is going to hurt. But think of it as hurting like, you know, getting your uh, a broken bone set. You know. Ooh, love that nice motto part. Don has been killing the game today. Oh. Here's the thing. A lot of most men stopped finding out where they ranked in high school. In education has been the last time a lot of dudes 
We all had to go through a process. See, some people played sports, some people didn't play sports, but everybody went to school. And in school, we had rankings. You ranked at a certain place in your class, and you also had your grades. So we determined who was, who was better than anybody else based upon grades. In sports, you do it by the score. But men, we always seek ranking. But if the last time you act, if the last time you actually kept your rank was in high school, I'm going to tell you this. You are behind. I can tell you that for almost a 100 percent fact. If you ain't if you stop keeping score where you ranked when you graduated high school, your eye is off the ball. See, just like you will never just like you'll rarely find. I'm not going to say never, but just like you'll rarely find a beautiful woman sitting on YouTube in a chat on somebody's comment section with just an avatar or a nameless badge or an initial beautiful women like to be seen. And men, we like to compete. See a lot of times guys, what we do is you stop looking at your ranking because you know you at the bottom. Not even hedge in the bottom. You know, you in the lower 25 or 10, 10 to 25 percent. And we got to do something about it. So before we get into it, let me say, if you watch my broadcast in a state of nature, when you move all this stuff away, the modern conveniences, uh, you know, the Internet and all this other kind of stuff. When we're just in a state of nature. Like some walking dead type shit. How do we keep score among men? Fighting and fucking. That's how we keep score. We war and we have women. So, especially if you ain't if you're not competing for women, you're out of that side of the game. So you got to look at your life from a resource. So here's what it is. It doesn't matter if you're it more MGTOW, red pill, whatever. This is going to be relevant because, dude. The competitive men, you can see them. They're here on YouTube. Competitive men tend to be out there in front. A lot of you non-competitive dudes tend to call yourself introverts. Introvert is a is a lot of the guys say to soften the blow is saying I'm just not competing. So let's go on some basic stuff. Let's go on some stuff. Yeah, Kyle was like, right, it was easy to gauge our rank when you were younger in high school. What determines your rank? Glad you ask. What determines your rank? You can look at your image, which amounts to your style, well, your appearance, behavior, communication, digital footprint. But you can really look at the way you look, your looks, which is your, your appearance. That is one part of your rank. You know whether or not you're a good-looking dude or not, classically handsome or not. You know if you're fat. You know if you're short, you know if you're bald-headed, you know if you're ugly. Come on, man. It's easy to pick out the competitive dudes because the competitive dudes, they're not all good-looking. They're not all tall and muscular and ripped. It's an attitude. So you can't sit back and say, well, I'm not competitive because I'm short and ugly. No, there are plenty of short, ugly dudes out there competing and winning. Look at CeeLo. Hey, man, I'm going to pull it out. Like I said, it's going to hurt because I got to jar a lot of you guys into reality. And the reason you're not in reality is because a lot of you guys are just lackadaisical, apathetic, and lack hope because there's nothing to compete for. So we got to look at your looks. And yes, you can do something about your looks or appearance. If you go to Donovan Sharp's Facebook page, you'll see the 312 pound Donovan Sharp and then the 220 pounds of twisted steel, Donovan Sharp Day. He did it. You can too. All right. Then you have to start looking at your material possessions, like uh, your home, your apartment, your condo, your car, that kind of stuff. This is where if you're driving foreign versus domestic, if you're living now, you know, New York City, homes don't really, you know what it means. When I lived in New York City, I lived in a high-rise building with a, uh, a doorman, a gym, a laundry, and parking. I was a baller and didn't know it, but that was my standard. I expected to live that way. 
I didn't live out in Hoboken and commute it. I paid the cost and I found a way to make that money. Cause I, just like me and brother Nagone talk about winning in power is an attitude. So you look at your looks and then your surroundings. Having your shit together uh, makes a big difference. Yeah, you got to do that. But see, if you're introverted, that means you're going to have to work hard. And I'm not going to make it easy. I'm going to make it hard on you guys tonight, so let's get into it. Let's start with one thing that every man has to use to keep score. Money. See, the reason is there are no real standards out there for guys, so it's easy to fly under the radar and not be judged. But I'm going to tell you, you know whether or not you are earning and making the kind of money you should be making for your age. Let me tell you right here. I know, I know I've met, I've counseled too many guys who are in their 30s and 40s and they are behind this scheme. So what you need to do is we're starting from age 18 years old. You're out of high school. You can go to the military at this age. You need to be making for the, for the CIA scale. This is the bare minimum to be at the normal rank. At the normal rank. Average. Average everyday dude. This is my scale. This is my scale for just average everyday dudes to be right there in the, in the sweet part of the bell curve. For every year, you need to be making 1.5. You need to be making uh, a $1,500 per year. So let's say you're 18 years old. Or let's say you're 21 years old. 21 years old. How much money do you need to be making at 21 years old to be right there in the sweet spot? Multiply 21 times 1.5. Hold on. Let's say 25 years old. 25. 25. Damn it. 25. 25 years old, $37,500. When I do wear a suit, older white women approach slash compliment me. What do I do if I wear a suit, older white women approach and compliment you? Take the compliment. And, and and enjoy it. I mean, you you say older white women, but that just means they're putting you in a position of respect. A suit is to command respect and also make you look more mature than your counterparts. That's why suits look out of place on teenage boys, but look in place on men in their 30s. That's why dudes in their 30s walking around wearing sweats and Jordans look out of place. But I'll get back to that either. So my scale is this, $1,500 per year. So if you graduated from high school and didn't go to college, you need to get out and, and your goal needs to be right here. So at 18, what is 1.5 times, what is $1,500 per year? At 18, $27,000 a year. What is $27,000 a year? That's roughly... Thirteen fifty an hour. You know what that is? That is a job at 7-Eleven. You can get a job at 7-Eleven, on cue, quick trip, the quickie mart, anywhere for thirteen fifty an hour. So without a, with a high school diploma and zero skills, you can make $27,000 a year. You can go stock shelves at Walmart, clean toilets, Thirteen fifty an hour, and that is where you start from at eighteen. And every year you need to make fifteen hundred dollars more for a year. So if nineteen years old and you ain't making fifteen hundred dollars more, and you only work in one job, get your ass back out there because you need to be working sixty hours per week minimum. So even if you get, and I'm giving you a forty hour work week. So if you if you don't have a 13 50 an hour job, you got a minimum wage job, guess what? That means you're gonna have to go work at Subway and McDonald's. But you gotta get that bread up. 
You got to get that bread up. You say you're 26 and with 90,000. Cool. Put a period there. You're, you're ahead of the game. But are you behind in other places? See, first we got to look at income. And I'm going to tell you, the benchmarks, the years where you need to really evaluate are 18, 21, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 50. Let's say right now I'm about to hurt somebody. I'm about to hurt you. If you are 40 years old, and you, if you are 30 years old, if you are three zero years old and you are not earning $45,000 a year, I'm not talking about New York City. I'm talking about in the heartland of America, Oklahoma, Texas, Iowa, Idaho, where the cost of living is average. $45,000 a year at 30. You are behind the game. Breathe. Breathe, 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 breathe. What I just did is I gave you a reality check because when you get out there and you go to the local bar, pub, Buffalo Wild Wings, whatever, and you in there with the, the sexy senoritas and all these fine, t- you out there with other men, this is how you're going to be judged. You're going to be ranked. You The reason you can't pull a higher value woman is because you got your pockets is on empty. The reason your confidence sucks is because you ain't making enough money. You don't, you feel fucked up because you ain't making what you should make. Uh, and I'm going to say it. Plenty of good dudes are sitting on life at, at, at below average content because, because you, it's like you walking around and no one knows, but you keep, it's like you walking around. You ever see somebody walk around and knock off, knock off stuff? People who walk around in knockoff stuff are terrified of somebody finding out they're walking around in knockoffs. But the dude that's living life below walks around terrified that somebody's going to find him out. Ooh, shit, I got messed up credit. That can be fixed. But when you are sitting around at 30 years old and you're making $25,000, your goal needs to be straightened up. So look. So do the math and ask yourself a question right here. Pull out your calculator. Ask yourself, at my age, am I making the amount of money I should be making? This is minimum. This is minimum. So let's just say at 40 years old. At 40, that means you need to be making 60. At 50, you need to be making 75. That's the minimum. That means to have a CIA caliber life. That means you'll be able to actually do shit, go places, do things. You're not just working and robbing Peter to pay Paul. You decide you want to date, you can actually date. Shout out to AMS. Like he said, you know, yeah, go out on a cheap date when you're initially meeting some chick. But man, you don't want to go out to Burger King when you with a, somebody who's in your rotation, do quality of their life. You want to go out and have a nice steak dinner. You want to eat some lobster from time to time. You want to go on vacation. And I'm going to tell you, I have met too many men in the last six months who 35, 37 years old, never wore a suit, never owned a suit. Let me say this again. Never wore a suit. Last suit they wore was at prom. How do you get to a life of be 37 of almost 40 years old and you've never worn a suit? Remember what I say, if you don't live a life that's broad enough that needs you to that requires you to wear a suit from time to time, you need a broader life. But you can do that if you're living life below. And see the thing is there's so many guys out there that are living life below and they'll get in these comment sections and they'll start talking about women and the, and the society and everything else and you may and they may and you thinking Oh yeah, they they around they 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 here with us and they're way down here. See, this is gonna hurt. See, if you're way down here on your earnings, you ain't got time to talk about no politics, no bitches, no nothing. Your ass need to go to work. Zero excuses. Thirty plus year old dudes never wore a suit. That's a problem. Don't be mad when these women start choosing because they are choosing based on rank. Yeah, they are choosing based on rank. So let's understand something. If you are behind on income, you got and you're not working 60 hours plus, no one wants to hear your problems. 
There are no excuses. And that's what I mean. If you're living behind, even if you cannot quantify it, there is something that comes along. But I use the money thing because you can immediately see this is where I am. Let's say you're 30 years old and you're not making 45. Let's say you're 30 years old and you're making 30, $30,000. That means you need to get up in the morning and start living life with a sense of urgency. You need to start running your life like you are losing because you are. Running, you cannot walk. You cannot even speak walk. You need to start running. And understand something. The first thing is you need to be working 60 plus hours a week. Let me say that again. If you're behind, you cannot just work 60 hours a week. You need to be working closer to 80. Yeah, that's right. That's right, dude. You need to lose some goddamn sleep and get out there and bust two full-time jobs to get your, your, your money up. Because until you get your money up, you cannot lead an adult male life. Not a happy one. You can live a ratchet one. You can date some lower caliber females, you know, twos, threes, and fours. You're going to have a life of ratchets and fast food. And honestly, good dudes, but it's hard for you to, it is going to be impossible for you to do what you need to do to catch up. Because you see, we talk about self-improvement. Here's where the rubber meets the road. You cannot hire a personal trainer, nutritionist, life coach, image consultant, any of these things because you don't make enough money. If you can barely pay your bills, you need another source of income. I've hammered this, but this is what you got to do. You got to start working. I already said if you're 40 and under, single, no kids, and you're not working 60 hours plus a week, you're lazy. But if you're behind financially, you need to be working closer to 80. Yeah, that's 16 hour days. That means you you all you do is sleep and work, sleep and work, sleep and work. And let me tell you what this means. You need to you need to go into overdrive. Zero excuses. No women, no dating, jack off. No pussy chasing, no none of that. Put yourself in jail for at least a year to get your mind right. What the fuck you out here at the bar having a beer, looking at the football game? Dude, you broke. You're not going to be able to, you're only in these rooms and stuff and you're living a lie. That's why you're a lot of guys are depressed. So what you do is you kick life in the overdrive and take the money the additional money you make and you need to double down on self-improvement. That means if you've been able to get by your, on your one job, the next job, you need to go get a, 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 get a, get a psyche valve, find out what's holding you back, get a life coach. If you're out of shape, overweight, all this other thing, get a personal trainer, take your second job and use it to start improving your life. Because when you start looking and liking who you see, you'll do better. You got a question? Or you, if you have a question and you want me to read it, you got to put it in the super chat or hit that link. What's going on, Nagone? So, uh, what happened to Derek Wright? If you type in all caps, man, the bot will time you out. The bot will time you out. So, guys, I I'm going to take a break here because I need you to digest what I just said. It is hella hard for you as a man to come into a room with Donovan, um, Nagon, myself, any CIA man who's on his purpose and know your pockets is on short. When we talk about, yeah, man, we're going to go over to, we're going to go over to the spot and then we're going to go have a couple of drinks and you know, you ain't got number $20 in your pocket and you, and we say, okay, 
This round is on me. And you know you cannot buy a round. So if you've had to live a life of going to the bathroom and around the drinks are bought, or even worse, you're not around people like that. It's always I buy my stuff, you buy your stuff. Dude, you're dying on the inside every day because you don't go nowhere and do nothing because you know you don't want nobody to find out that you've been living living below. That's real talk. You feel bad. So it's like, I'm going to just go to work and go home. But see, what you're doing is beating yourself up. What you're doing is you're living life in jail. Better to, if you're going to, better to say, you know what? I'm going to go out and work. Because at least you'll get the sense of satisfaction of going to bed exhausted, but your money is coming in. You need to go into life overdrive. Overdrive on the self-improvement. Zero excuses. No women. Zero. And then the highest levels of accountability. Shout out to Obsidian Media Network. When he says he wants to scraggle daggle to confess, you need to confess too. You need to confess to your friends. I am a fuck up. Dude, I'm, I'm... 35 years old, and I'm still living life like a teenager. My wardrobe is like a teenager. My income is like a teenager. I date like I'm dating a teenager. Guy. Matter of fact, if I lost the job I have right now, there's no way I'd be able to go out and get another job making this much money because I have no skills. I've been living life like, uh, like a teenage boy. And I'm going to tell you, I, I've met, I know dudes out there, good dudes. Like I said, brother ain't, don't, guys, not even brother. Men don't wear, haven't worn a suit since high school. Don't own one. What's in your closet? Nothing. I'm like, how do you get to life? And, 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 and it's not even just a matter of income. Some dudes actually make enough money to afford all these things, but they don't live a life like it. I'm like, so... It's one thing to not have the money, but if you do have the money and your wardrobe and your appearance still looks like a boy, you're still a boy. You may have more money than the first guy, so you feel like, ah, I'm better than that. Okay, but what are you doing in your life? If you're living a life to where you're not exposed to anything that you wouldn't have been exposed to as a teenage boy, Houston, we have a problem. You have to get really clear on what should a 30, let's just say a 30-year-old man, a 30-year-old man and a 21-year-old man should be living two different lives. The 21-year-old man needs to be out there chasing it. You know, I would expect the 20, the 18 to 21-year-old to be at spring break, college parties, drinking, chasing skirts, you know, hitting the gym heavy, you know, but at 30, I would expect that to be way out of your system. You still go out, but you're not going to the, you know, coin beer night places. You're not going to the, you know, the 18 and up clubs. You're at least going to the 25 and up clubs if you're still going out. But you at 30, you should be out of that clubbing phase. You should be going to lounges and things like that because you will be the old fucking man in the club. And at 35, this stuff should really be out of your system. At 40, the only time you end up going to a club like that I just referred to is if you happen to go back home for the holidays and you meet some friends out. 40-year-olds in the 21 and up club is a pervert. You're lame and a loser. Again, big brother, uncle. I shouldn't have to, I'm saying stuff that you already know is right. So if it's fucking with you, it's what you already know is right. So the highest levels of accountability, you're going to have to confess to some folks around you. I'm living life on file. And this is why you're going to go have to hire mentors life coaches and everything else. The question I really wanted to ask, are you competent enough to live your life as an adult? Oh shit, but I didn't want to put that in the chat room. The question I wanted to ask is, are you really competent enough to run your own life? Nagone, is Nagone in here? I mean, ask yourself a question. If you weren't you, would you, could somebody say, are you really competent enough to be considered, to be called a man? 
I mean, let me say this again. Let's say you a 40 year old dude and you, you don't, you ain't never owned a suit. Never owned the suit. You got a job and you paying your bills. So that's cool. You're surviving. But life is not supposed to be surviving. Life is supposed to be thriving. I'm going to buy more mirrors. Chris Jones makes a good point. You know why you avoid a mirror? Because you know you don't want to look yourself in the eye. See, men who are competitive and women who are beautiful have no problem being out there because even if they lose the game, they're still in it. So many guys today use this tag of introvert as, a, as an outright lie. I'm about to say it, and I don't mean no harm. I'm about to say it, and I don't mean no harm. But so many guys today are using the tag introvert where the tag loser would have been 20 years ago. That doesn't mean you're a Madden king. That means you're a bum. This means you're a loser. And here's what a loser was 20, 30 years ago. A guy who was just working a work a day gig, he'd come home after working in his one bedroom apartment. He'd turn on the TV because there was no cable. He'd click on ABC, NBC, CBS, whatever he had and we'll watch whatever local programming was, may grab a beer, and he go put a Hungry Man or a Swanson's TV dinner in the oven. Or he go eat some shit like some sardines or some Vienna sausages and crackers. He eat, you know, you know, week, you know, spaghetti week, you know, spaghettios, hot dogs. You know, so he's eating. He's got his own place. I mean, he may have a car. It's not, it's not to be, you know, it's older model, 10, 15 years, held together. You know, it's not dirty. But it's, you know, he ain't riding the way he want to. And then you look at this dude and ask him, dude, you're 35 years old. Is this what you thought you would be when you were a little boy? When you were eight years old, did you think you'd be this? No. But that was a, we called those guys losers. And those guys knew they were losing. See, we got too many guys today who are losing and blaming on everything else. Life is not meant to be survived. It's meant to be thrived. He said, I'm definitely not living life like I should be. Well, understand something. If you're not living life like you should be, then there is only there's only one thing to do. You have to go into overdrive on self-improvement, and you're not qualified to do it yourself. Again, I don't mean to be rude. I'm not trying to be hurtful, but you're not competent enough to run this part of your life. Let's use somebody like O'Shea. O'Shea is open and tells you his story that he lived at home and then he went to Poland. But through O'Shea's entire story, you hear O'Shea, you see that work ethic. That dude has an insane work ethic. He's the kind of brother that his situation was, was bound to turn because he was always moving. Same thing with Obsidian. Same thing with Angry Man. Same thing with Donovan. You see a lot of guys in the mantle, so Ron Wills. You see a lot of these dudes, AMS. You see a lot of these dudes, it's like, okay, Eventually, it's going to be their time because that's a lot. They put a lot of work and energy and effort They're out there moving, moving, moving. I'm talking about the other guys who sit back and say, I'm not living where I should be. But then your wallet is like this and you ain't and you're not you, you haven't hired one coach. You haven't booked one consult. Here's the damn consult right now. If you if you're in this chat room right now, you know damn well. You are living behind and below. You got there because of your best choices. You are likely not qualified to, you're likely not competent enough to run your life. And that's not a, and acknowledging that is not a bad thing. 
It's no different than somebody who's fucked up their credit going to a credit repair place and saying, I don't understand credit. Can you fix this for me? And then the credit repair person says, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to teach you this. If we can admit that, if we're okay with admitting we need to get our credit fixed, you weren't competent enough to fix your own credit. You're not competent enough to fix this or else you would. No amount of watching videos is going to get you to be able to repair your own credit the way a, a professional could. That's what life coaches and stuff is for. Shout out to C Boogie Productions. At this point in life, the kind of guy I'm talking about, you need a life coach more than a dating coach. How do you maintain winning? How do you... Okay, this is what we need to do. Guys, I'm going to say put this in the super chat. This is what I'm going to do. You're going to put, if you got a question that you want me to answer, this is deep stuff. You're going to put it, you're going to put it in the super chat. Any question that you really want an answer to, you're going to hit the damn super chat. I'm not answering them. Because this is another thing. It's 172 people looking. Being the, the losing like we're talking about, living behind comes with a gimme handout mentality. You don't want to do nothing. I got a dude in the chat room that I know is 18 years old and this dude is going to kick a lot. I'm, let me say this right now. The next generation, Generation Z, I am so excited for these young cats. These 24 and under young men, I am seeing them all throughout so YouTube and YouTube streets and in, in real life who are already doing the work, working 40, 60 hours a week, regardless as to the amount Loving of... Loving this, Kevin. I got a job interview tomorrow to help pay for the life coaching. That's what's No up. excuses. That's it. Young guys, these 24 and under guys are going to kick y'all's ass. In the next 10 years, they're going to take millennial men. You got a problem. These young Thundercats is coming. They're, they're absorbing the content. They're out there doing the work and coming with saying, okay, I've done this, 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 this. I've tried this, I've tried this, I've read this, I've read that. Booking consults, and, say, and whether it's me or anyone, I've talked to other people, and I'm like, yeah, these young cats, man, they're picking it up. They ain't trying to live life behind. They're trying to get it. And then they're, they are, and, and a lot of these dudes make less, and their situations are the same. So you can't be an older dude with no kids and, and be getting your ass kicked by 18 year olds and then come to the chat rooms and whatever. And they super chatting questions, not just $1, $2. You're talking about dudes putting $25, $100 just to ask a question. What's the difference? One is the attitude of a young dude that sees the value and wants to win. And see, here's the thing. Men and teachers always want to teach. It's easier to help guys like that. But see, some of you guys are like, ah, see, he's just trying to pander to get me to give me my, give me, give me some dollars. Understand something, dude. I don't need your funky $2. I mean, to be real, I'm not trying to be rude, but your two or five dollars ain't going to make or break me. I want you to do it, but I want you to do it because you need to support black male media. You need to support your men who speak to your issue. You ain't going to, you ain't going to make me rich by giving me five dollars. But if your mind was in any of that neg any of the stuff I just said, that negative stuff, you got a major problem. And that is why you stay stuck. <clears throat> Give me a second. Understand something. Teachers want to teach. I want to teach people who want to learn, not people who are just asking for it. I want to teach people who want to learn. David Black said, loving this content. Got a job interview tomorrow to help pay for my life coach. No excuses. That young man's going to kick y'all's ass. Young men like that are going to fuck y'all up. Matter of fact, young men like that get me, get me excited. Make me want to stretch and say, oh, yeah, you got, the, you got the youth on your side, young Thundercat, but I got wisdom and experience. Let's run. Me and the gone, we was geeking out on winning and power to the point we was two hours into it and forgot it. These are the men that are out there. That's your competition. You got to ask yourself, what do you line up with the dudes you watch, the dudes you see? 
look next to you, and if you got a wildebeest or a buffarilla, that's the best bitch you could get because that's your level. Big brother, uncle, love. But we got to be real, guys, because imagine if we walked around life like Angry Man's Battery. Imagine we walked around life and we had a meter that showed here's 100% of living at your level, the level of uh, at whatever age man you should be. Here's 100% of a 35-year-old man. If you was in the green, you'd be good. But if you were starting to get into the light green to the yellow, you would be, a lot of shit that you say in these YouTube streets and online, you wouldn't be saying it if you actually had that meter on your fucking head. Because you feel some kind of way about speaking out about black female fuckery or ratchet bitches or MGTOW or feminism. You feel some kind of way if you was in that, in that green and yellowish. But if you was down in that orange tipping to red, you you probably, you, you'd come out of the house between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. You wouldn't want nobody to see your ass. You'd be a third shift living motherfucker. You be ducking and dodging and hiding because everybody be like, why is, why, why is your power meter down on the orange and in the red? What's wrong, man? Did, did you get sick? Or did you have a bad... What happened? You got a bad, bad... What happened is the reason you live in life, you know, in the red or the orange. Something had to happen. Tell me about this bitch that took everything from you. Tell me about a... a, 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 a a life-threatening illness, a huge medical bill, tell me something. Because there has to be a reason you are living life at, and the negative, I mean, with your meter in the red. Warning, warning, your life lying on low. And if you ain't got a good story, dudes be like, it's like Mortal Kombat. It's love fighting games. Think of yourself as a fighting game. If you, if you fucking, uh, Sub Zero, you fucking uh, Luke Cage. I mean, not Luke Cage, Luke Kang. How many times you in a fight and that person's meters all the way up and you halfway down? Well, guess what? You got to be a little bit more defensive, but you still got to attack from the retreating position. But there comes a point in time when the motherfucker's kicking your ass so much, you can't run backwards no more. You got to fight for your life because you can't block every punch he throws. You got to go on an attack and start next thing you know, you chipping away and whittling down at him. That's the way you need to approach life. Sense of urgency. If you are behind, are you, you have to live your life with an incredible sense of urgency. Because here's the thing. The competitive dudes are already out there working 60 hours a week. We already out there running and trying to get it. You got to, you got to get a cheat code. You got to get a cheat code. You got to get some some life steroids. You can't walk your way into a race with a motherfucker that's running. The highest level of accountability. That is why you need coaches and people and mentors to put their foot square in your ass. Anybody who's one of my students in life coaching will tell you. Kevin puts his size 12 exactly where it needs to be. But the dudes that stick in it and do it are experiencing massive changes in their life, surprising the shit out of themselves. And it wasn't because they all weren't good dudes. It was just because they just needed a little such and so forth. Me and Nagon talked about it the other night, how he had a teacher who basically told him, you can't do this. And how Nagon was like, I'm going to tell you out the frame. And I had a similar story. I had mine early on in life. Maybe yours is now. But see, what no one accepts is you live in life below. You cannot expect to go out and produce the next generation from your loins with the best broads living life down here. And you get mad at Pookie and Ray Ray because they may not, because they, because they having a flip flower or something like that to get their money up. Well, I understand. Are they cheating? The Negro cheat. Cheat. Power does not care. It's amoral. Practice. Cheat. Work two jobs. Figure it out. If you don't, if you don't have, you don't want to cheat the way they cheated, then you're gonna to have to find a way to, to, to do it this way. 
But you got to get the gold. See, you can't get mad at those dudes like, oh, man, you know, uh, they ain't making it. The demand kings and they're getting all the fine ass. Well, they, they learn social skills. They learn something. They had some game or some mouthpiece. Whatever it is, they beat you. Whatever it is they did, you pissed off because you losing to somebody you view as below you. Well, I think New England went to the Super Bowl the year I got married. Yeah, they went and played the Giants, I believe. They were 17 or 18 and 0. They were supposed to win the Super Bowl, but they came up against a Giants team that didn't realize they were supposed to lose. And some crazy catch got made. It didn't matter that the New England Patriots had the lineage and had all the things on their side. It didn't matter that the Giants were supposed to lose. The Giants didn't get that memo. They found a way to win. And you can look at all the stats and everything else. And oh, oh the Patriots, the Patriots, they still lost. That's why I don't say Pookie and Ray Ray or Brad or whatever the equivalent of anywhere ain't my enemy. My enemy, your enemy is apathy. So again, ask yourself a question. Where are you living? Are you ahead or below? Somebody said, 30 and feeling unfulfilled. Analyzing my purpose is now a journey. Let's talk right there. Big brother, uncle, love you. Become a patron of the channel. We're going to get more into this on Patreon. Analysis paralysis. Dudes, understand something. All you need to know is you behind. You sitting back trying to figure out where you made a wrong turn along the lines is like a schizophrenic trying to diagnose a manic depressant. No, dude. You can go back through all your past hurts, breakups, and everything else, and all you are doing is going through wreckage. You need someone that can shine a light into your situation. What I'm saying is basically you cannot do it on yourself. So when I hear dudes say, I'm analyzing myself, no, you are not competent enough to run your own life. And that's not a bad thing. Again, credit. If your credit is 450, you're not competent enough to fix your own credit. You need a credit repair counselor to fix it. Then you maintain it. Money. <clears throat> Let me just go ahead and hit you with a rubber meets the road. If you don't want to get your feelings hurt, or you might want to leave this part, because I'm about to get real. Your biggest concern is not getting ripped off for, for three, four, five hundred dollars, throwing it away on a dating coach or a life coach or somebody. That's not your biggest concern. Sitting back trying to say, well, which one should I go to? Uh, who, who's qualified to talk to? Dude, all you need to know is you fucked up. Five hundred dollars thrown away and you get zero return because they didn't fix your life in six weeks is not your issue. Say that again. You can't sit back and talk about, oh, well, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of money. You've lived a life of 30 plus years old. You done fucked it up enough on your own. And you done damn sure tricked off thousands of dollars on these broads. That money would have been better invested in self-improvement. So you can miss me with the you got to analyze and I don't have and I don't know and the money, money. You know, no, 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 no. So let's recap. Oh, call line is open. Call line is open because I do want to take some calls with some guys to see if if you if you have a question of where you rank, if you're if you're unclear, if you're kind of like, well, I'm not sure if I'm behind, I'm not certain. 
if you got questions about competency, because see, here's where women have it right. You cannot want women to be submissive and follow your lead. If you, if you bust out the hungry man dinners and the Swanson dinners for life, I don't mean you're eating Swanson and ramen because you're saving money to invest in this and you got a plan. Oh shit. Hmm. Let me tell you right now, you're behind in life if you don't have a plan. If you don't have a one-year, five-year, and ten-year plan, you're behind. If you've never had a plan, yep, I said it again. You know who the dudes are behind? The dudes that are behind, they don't plan anything. They've never planned anything. Life is just being laid. You're just living life on instinct. There's no plan. There's no strategy. There's no methodology. It's just, I got a job. I go to work. They pay me. I'm 48 and a widower, and I have no children. My wife passed two years ago. I lost an income and now rebuilding financially. I'm a graphic designer, and I teach digital media. I know I can do much better financially. I need to catch up. Do you have any advice? So you're 48, a widower. I have no children. Your wife passed two years ago. My condolences. I lost my. I lost an income, and now I'm rebuilding financially. I'm in graphic des- I'm a graphic designer. I teach digital media. I know I can do better financially. I need to catch up. Any advice? I, I made a suggestion once that if I were a graphic designer and I taught digital me- t- taught did- digital media, I would approach every content creator in the black manosphere and say, I can make you a website. Let me make a website for you and show you what I can do. Make that website and say now in exchange for that, if you like it and you use it, can you put can you put my tagline down at the end of your video? Can you can I put my my uh, watermark somewhere? Exchange your labor for their exposure. That's number one. You the more people that know about you, the more people that can buy from you. Number one. Number two. Uh, I I use the Gary Vaynerchuk eBay challenge. Go into your house and start flipping stuff on eBay. How many colognes do you have that you don't use? Go take this and sell it for $100. Go take some baseball cards, some shoes, suits, tools. You got thousands of dollars probably sitting around your house that of stuff you don't use. Do not be above going to clean toilets at the local Walmart or uh, working at the local Piggly Wiggly. Like I said, I've worked... I waited tables. That was one of the best skills I could have. Be- becoming a waiter was one of the best things I ever did because it was cash money and it put me in heavy circulation. Any kind of business to where you can get paid cash, waiting tables, bartending, that kind of stuff is great. Things that allow you to build your business during the day and work at night, like I said, convenience stores, that kind of stuff. Pride. A hungry, uh, uh, an empty stomach and pride don't match. At 48, you got enough wisdom to be able to swing out of this slump quickly. I said, I said, I'm looking for a new website right now. I made a broadcast the other day. I don't like the way my website looks. Uh, and if some, if you were to approach me, show me what you can do. But if you're going to ask me to pay for it, I'm going to evaluate you just like I would evaluate the rest of the market. At the end of the day, you have wisdom and experience. And also you have skills. Putting your Going out, putting your services out on sites like Fiverr. Getting more, if you teach digital media and you're not in the digital spaces and people can't see what you do, dude, there's a wealth of stuff that's available for a graphic designer. All right, guys, the call-in line is there. Okay, if you guys have questions, I need here's what I need, and here's what I need you to do. The call-in number is here, 347-857-3847. Press 1 to be put into the call queue. No anonymous calls. I've said it before. If you have a question, you're going to put it in Super Chat and, and highlight it. 
or you're going to hit the link and put it in there. Or if you sitting on broke, your pockets ain't right right now, you can call in. But I want you to do something before I just answer it. See, this, what I'm saying this for is ultimately, guys, here's what you cannot do. Man, I'm behind. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm behind. I sure need to get better. Stop saying it. I mean, seriously, real talk. Stop saying that. Because here's what the world hears. You sound like a baby, a victim. Nobody wants to hear that you're behind. What people want to see is sweat coming off your face and effort. And then people ask you, damn, you're working hard. What you working so hard for? Shit, dude, I got to get it. I, I, I've been living behind. That's that goddamn confession. That's that holding yourself accountable. But see, let me, let me paint that picture again. One dude sitting back, man, I'm behind. Life ain't, ain't where it should be. I'm just behind, man. Damn, I'm behind. How many people want to sit around a dude like that? They be like, oh, my bad, dude. Okay. People just clear out around you. But then another dude come in, he's stacking boxes. He ain't saying shit to nobody. Stacking them motherfucking boxes. Nick stacking boxes. Stacking. Wipes the sweat off his face. Grab a little water. He's stacking boxes. Moving shit out of the way. And pushing shit. Excuse me. Mm, what's up, man? Stacking them boxes. And fucking them boxes up. And sweating and shit. And stacking the boxes. And like, bruh, you are working like John Henry. What's what's going on, man? I mean, damn, you it's hundred degrees out here, and you stacking the shit out them boxes. What's up? What, what's up, fam? Man, I'm behind, dude. I'm behind like a motherfucker. I know I should be further along in life. I gotta get it, man. I gotta get it, man. I gotta get it. Now, who do you want to do this? There are two different responses. The first dude will walk away from the the, the stranger will walk away from the first dude. Nobody want to be around you. But the stranger would would sit back and say, shit, that nigga getting it. Let me get out of his way, man. All right, good luck, bro. Keep it doing it, man. And that dude would be like, nigga, I need to get out of here and get it. He out here getting it. And then the mindset of both of those dudes, the first dude, he's a pity party. The second dude is honestly don't care what the stranger thought or not. He's just stacking the goddamn boxes, getting it done. Stop saying it. Uh, clockwork. Yeah, if you here's the thing: if you are blocked on Patreon, I had a uh, several people on Patreon that their pledges didn't go through, and Patreon kept sending out messages, and I sent out messages. Uh, I know they had a issue where they were having payment problems, but if here's the thing: let me make this announcement: whether you're a patron of my channel or anybody's channel. If you are a patron, you need to make sure your pledge goes through every month because if it doesn't um, and you get blocked, you the messages that go out. So dude, hit, send me an email uh, and let me see what's going on. But I would say this for anybody. If you're a patron and for something happens, your pledge can't get processed, you're behind or something, just respond to the message. Let me know. But what I can have happen is guys not respond because, and then they get blocked. And all of a sudden, like, what happened? I mean, you get blocked for a reason. It's not because they're not a plenty, uh, plenty of messages go out. If you get blocked the first time and something happened, it's just like, all right, man, cool. Just don't let it happen again. Just keep me in the loop because if it, and you got to tend to come back at the higher level, especially if you could have prevented. It. But getting blocked. Nobody gets blocked twice. You get blocked twice is permanent. Okay, cool. Hit me. Okay, cool. I know clockwork. You've been around though. So that was just a general announcement. Okay, so stacking the boxes. Stacking the boxes is something. Ask yourself the last time. Ask yourself a question, guys. When was the last time you really worked hard? I mean, really worked hard. When was the last time you went to bed exhausted? Say that again. Anybody play football in high school? Two a days? 
When was the when you would go to bed exhausted? The good thing about going to bed exhausted is you sleep like a baby. You sleep like a baby. Cuz when you're exhausted, your subconscious knows I went after it today. I burned it all up. You can't you cannot be stressed. You can't toss and turn when you're exhausted. But, you know, back when I was going through my, my marriage was falling apart and, and everything, I hated my job. Dude, my, I woke up at 6, 17 every morning like Groundhog Day. And every morning, I would wake up and immediately my stomach would crunch into a knot. I was stressed. I was miserable. I actually later that year start suffering panic attacks. I have a cut in my eyebrow right here. Let's see if I can get up on it. Um, real shit. I have a cut in my eyebrow. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there. That cut in my eyebrow, I was actually at a friend's house and I was had gone through suffering panic attacks. And I went from, all I remember is I was standing there talking to my buddy and the next thing I know, I was eating a cookie. The next thing I know, you ever hit your head so hard like a football hit? I went from being six foot four and I just... All I remember is my head bouncing off the fucking uh, linoleum. I missed the corner of the kitchen island by that much. I landed, I split my shit open right here, and it was just gushing. I had a concussion. Panic attacks, concussion. I went to the emergency room twice thinking I was having a heart attack. It was panic attacks. Evicted, car repossessed, divorced. The world was falling apart. Good man. Good husband. Good father. Good stepfather. Shit's fucked. My pet bird that I raised from a hatchling, he's a parrot, an eclectus parrot, got him the same month my daughter was born. They grew up together. He was at my ex's place because I had, had to move from there. Bird loved her, loved her kid. She killed him. Killed him through neglect. Bird got an infection because she wouldn't change the cage and he was sitting there standing in feces filled water. This is a seventeen hundred dollar parrot. Bird had a four hundred word vocabulary. He meant everything to me. He meant the world to me. Trained. Trained parrot. Couldn't even keep all that shit that's going on at one time. Lost my job. Started a new job. Lost that one because I was not in the mind space. But one thing did happen in this whole thing is I moved from the city to North Dallas. And one thing they used to lament is for as much of a believer as I am, I had not heard the voice of God in 10 plus years. Out there, Dallas was having a Super Bowl that year. It iced over. And I remember looking out of my apartment that I got by the grace of God because shit was fucked. No car, none of this stuff. All I had was the, my furniture, that I, and I'm looking out of the window over this frozen landscape, 
And for the first time in over a decade, I actually heard the voice of God again. It was almost like I needed to be there. And a lot of people aren't very spiritual. And I don't talk about spirituality much on this channel, but all that shit happened. My best friend from, best female friend from college, you know, was a virgin when she was at college. She told me she ended up having, a, there were a lot of fucked up shit going on. What I do remember this time in life is as down as I was, people were opening themselves up to me. I got in the elevator and said, Hi, hey, how are you doing today to some woman? And she just broke down and started telling me her entire story. I ran into so many people. It's like almost on a daily basis. People were like open wounds and telling me stuff so much though. I was like, why are people, these complete strangers telling me their life story in the convenience store over cupcakes? And my shit is fucked up. All this stuff fell apart. And do you know in 12 months, it was restored plus. I went from here to there, not having a car to buying my BMW cash because I had the money plus. A lot of people would have given up, wanted to die. I know I did not understand what was happening, but I knew I needed to fight. I had every reason to be angry, and I was. I had every reason to be sad, and I was. I had every reason. No one would have faulted me. Couldn't eat. Just fucked up. So many things fell apart at one time. No one would have faulted me. But I wanted, but I did. I wanted better. I said, you know what? You're on your back. The only place to look is up. So I'm not just on this YouTube shit just pumping your head full of stuff. I'm telling you. Your life can change in a year. The lowest point in your life is a good thing. That means you only have up to go. But if you look at the thumbnail I used, it was a man reaching up. You got to do something. When you are doing something, people will help you. At the lowest point in my, in my life, friends around were okay with helping because they knew that I was doing something. I was fighting, I was moving forward, I was doing something. I had to cobble this together, cobble that together, this part-time job, this, this setback, this ahead. No, it wasn't pretty. But I didn't only survive it, I thrived through it. Why can't you? No, 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 wrong question. Why won't you? Damn, I went through some shit. Man, it's life. It's life. And I haven't even spoke, done the video talking about I, how I survived cancer. I'm not going to do a live stream on that. It's too emotional. But the point is, you guys come on the, video, on the, on the YouTube channels like, who is this pretty motherfucker? Look at this dude. Uh-huh. Oh, it's easy for you. you. You're this. You're that. You got this going and you got that going. Dude, you see the end result. Scars are there. Scars are there to remind you the past was real, but that's just it. The past. Your past is your past. It is meant for you to learn the lesson, not meant for you to stick in it. I implore you as a man. No one is going to feel sorry for you. No one is going to, you got to get out there. Something happened back in the day. The person that did that to you back in the day have gone on. You can't be a prisoner to that. And even if you are, no one is going to accept it for a viable solution. All right, so nobody decided to call in. True spirit. I have a history of reacting to setbacks with depression and self-destructive behavior that has been changing the last four months. I'll keep listening to the black manosphere. Congratulations for a change of direction, but you need to understand my message for you guys is this. You have to do more than just listen. 
You have to actually get in your wallet, actively engage. Yes, I am telling you, counseling, life coaches, these are the things you have to do in order to fix them. Again, you're not competent enough to run your own life. When I was down that low, I wasn't competent enough either. I reached out to other people for help, but I actually did work before I reached out. There's no shame in a downturn. And so many of you guys are living life ashamed of where you are. I'm behind at 35 years old. I should not be here. I should be there. Okay. The only shame is to continue to sit there and act like pouting about it or act like it's going to change because you feel bad. No. I tell you, you need to get another job and I tell you, go work at a convenience store, but you got too much pride to go do that. Any honest day's work for an honest wage, you know why you don't want to go there? Because you don't want somebody to see you there. That's a goddamn problem. You ain't there yet. If you worry about where somebody was, I didn't care if somebody saw me. Somebody saw me doing that stuff. I'm like, you're damn right. I'm here and I'm making money. I had people who saw me when I, after, after my divorce and everything, waiting tables. That was a skill I had acquired. I'm like, yeah, what you don't realize, I'm making $100 a day, making more than I was making over here. And yeah, I'm having to bring you your bread and everything else, but I'm getting money. And then six months later, they're like, how are you driving around a BMW? Because everything I had was a plan. All those menial jobs, part of a plan. I went to work with the greatest attitude because I knew I wasn't going to be there long because it was part of a plan. People run into me, man, I remember you was a waiter at so-and-so and now you, it's part of a plan. Winning in power. Your mindset. And I got there because I've had help along the way. I've had coaches along the way. I've had life coaches. I've had therapy. I've had all these things. I've had to, I spent thousands of dollars. I didn't do my own style. I didn't do my own image console. I went to a professional. If I can, so can you. Okay, Jordan. Why are you not calling in? This is why I don't want to know. Why don't you guys call? Okay, you guys need to call in. Let me go ahead and do this. Jordan, call in. 267, caller, what's your first name? Hello? All right. 267, didn't get you. 631, caller, what's your first name? Jay. Uh, say it again. Jay. Jay? Yeah. What do you got for us, Jay? Uh, I just think this is probably one of your most important videos, and I just wanted to call in and contribute and just say that I find myself in the same place, exactly what you said, word for word, and... I'm making, before this video even dropped, I'm making the proper steps and moves to get myself to where I need to be. And okay. just hearing it, like, you know what I mean? Okay. Just reach. Well, well. What, just hearing um, exactly what you're saying. Well, what about it? What about this video actually what, what spoke was that? to you? So what about this video actually spoke to you? It's just in general, just like what. Like, you, it hit the core when you're just like, yo, when you know you don't have that, that money and you got to pretend and fake and this and that, and then mm -hmm. you got to act a certain way around your peers and your friends and, and all that. I was like, damn, this dude just, like, really hit it on the nail with mm -hmm. that one. So, and just, like, and being a good-looking dude and all that, but not being able to, like, go out on the, the dates that I want to mm -hmm. and all that and do what I want, it's just, like, 
it's just like, damn, like I, I know what I got to be doing, but there's something like kind of holding me back and it's definitely like laziness. And I know I got like the actual skill set to be doing what I need to do ahead, but I got to take that year off to like focus on getting those hours in and then getting exactly what I need. I got, I got the plan, but I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm just talking too much and I got to put more, put those, those words into action. So how how old are you? 27. 27. Dude. <laughs> 27. Let me tell you something. That year taking off, you won't even notice it. When you really take that year off, yeah. the year, the, the times when I took off, I was so busy working towards my purpose. I It was after the first 30 days, you won't even miss it. I, I Believe me, you won't miss it. Mm -hmm. It will go by before you mm -hmm. know it. And when you re-engage, you will have already start setting into place these positive habits and, you know, get, get your money situation more lined up. So instead of going on the, these dates and things, it's one thing to be able to go on a date with a beautiful, high value woman, but you don't want to have to go keep doing it. You want to actually end up having them stay around on your time frame. You don't want to keep pouring water mm -hmm. into a bucket where there's a larger hole in the bottom. What we're talking about is taking a year off to plug mm -hmm. the hole to where you can keep all the stuff you're working for. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that is what. Thanks for calling in, fam. I got more calls uh, to take in, but I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. No problem. All right. Have a good one. Guys, you know, when I said that thing about going out and not having money, I tell you, dude, that's a horrible feeling. To know you ain't got but $20 and the club costs 10 to get in. You got $10 to drink and to eat afterwards. So you buying what? One drink and then trying to go to get a taco or something afterwards? But then the party is going and you see a chick, you can't do anything. Money gives you options and you feel some kind of way. The entire time you're there, you're not enjoying it because you're like, damn, man, they, they over here living it up and I'm behind. And he, any of you got good friends, they may say, man, I got the drinks, I got the round, but there's something inside of you as a man. It's like, I'm tired of motherfuckers having to pay for my round. I'm tired of for this shit, man. Because you don't, you don't like it. you like, that's, that's your manhood fucking with you. Manhood is telling you, no, nah, man, you need to pay your own way. That's a positive sign. Here's the thing. Understand, make that the last, make the next time the last time to where you ain't got to do it again to where somebody say, oh man, I got your drink. No, I'm good. Or even better, when this happens, when this happens, when you actually start working and getting that shit ready and you go out with your friends and you say, first round's on me. Everybody be like, what? You bullshit. No, nah, no, nah, this no, nah, you didn't. First rounds of me. Man, okay, what? And get whatever you want. First rounds of me. Oh, snap! <laughs> that respect level that comes from your boys because they may clown you a bit, but they really saying is, dude finally got his shit together. That's my dog right there. Man, the the subtle glances men make to other men when we affirm each other's manhood, men decide who are men. Men decide, not women, men. And the women sit around and look at men affirming other men, and that's when you become more of select and on your way to pre-select. Um, 415, caller. Hello? What's your, 415, what's your first name, caller? Uh, Jordan. Jordan, what, what do you got for us? Well, I was calling because I posted a question. Um, you know, the situation I'm at, and and I just didn't know where. You know, is it good to like move to another city and try to rebuild yourself, or to like stay where you're at and you know try to build yourself in a you know atmosphere where you probably burnt a lot of bridges 
mm. and stuff like that. How old are you? I'm 32. I just turned 32. Okay. Uh, without getting too deep into it, you burn bridges, meaning what? With friends and family or with employers? With what? Uh, I'd say like friends. Uh, not too much family out here. Mm -hmm. um, just friends. Um, you know, it's a very expensive city I live in, but it's also a city with a lot of opportunity too so you're as well. in the Bay Area? Yes. Okay. Um, honestly, have you lived, are you from the Bay Area? No, I'm not from the Bay Area. I'm from SoCal, Southern California. Okay, so I am a big proponent of changing scenery. Uh, changing scenery gives you a fresh start. You going from an expensive city, um, moving to someplace like Seattle, hell, someplace like um, Houston, Dallas, you know, yes, I am all for changing cities because... The only people you have, there is something to be said for a fresh start and you can always go back. Uh, do you work for a company that yeah. has locations in the city that you'd be interested in? Um, no, I mean, I was, I barely just got a job last week. I was, um, on a play for a while, but it's a, I think it's a, it's a chain. So I think they have stores in different states. Okay. So one of the, one of the tricks I used to use is I would work for a company or an organization that had locations where I wanted to go. And see, it's one thing to try to move from Dallas, from Houston to Dallas on your own or from Dallas to New York on your own, but it's another thing to take a promotion or uh, with the company and then move because you got a job already waiting for you. So think about that. Um, if you start a job and you're working someplace, maintain work on making making sure this goes right and then look on the map and say where does this company yeah. uh, or where where does this company have locations that i may even want to move to even if it's back to socal or if it's up to maybe seattle or something uh and and, and look at it because like you said dude you can always move back but i'm always a big fan of, of trying uh, a new location okay gotcha gotcha sounds good bro gotcha. thanks for calling okay. in bye-bye all right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Guys, one of the, like I said, shout out to the caller. One of the, like I said, let me say that again. When I, when you're in corporate America, I believe in you making as much money and getting as much knowledge from that company. Take advantage of all their trainings, all their opportunities, their employee assistance line. Use every resource they have. If you're in the widget department, go to the Slurpee department. Learn how to make Slurpees. If you're in the Slurpee department, go over to the fry department. Learn the whole goddamn thing like Nagone and I were talking about. And then look at where that company is and see do they have a location in somewhere else. You know, I never knew. I I, lit, I wasn't working in a company and I thought I was going to be going to L.A. or, or uh, San Francisco. I took three scouting trips to San Francisco and one to L.A. New York was never a city I wanted to move to. Didn't know anything about it. Those two cities fell through. I was at work on a Friday. My CEO said, are you still relocatable? Of course. He said, the plane ticket's waiting for you at the airport. I flew up on a Friday. They wind and dine me over the weekend. Monday morning, 8 p.m., they offered me the job. Wednesday morning at 8 p.m., I'm living out of a suitcase at a hotel. I moved in under a week. And it was the best experience I ever had. I'd never seen New York City before, never visited. Thought the women were probably ugly, it's cold. And boy, that was the first city I ever felt like I, be I belonged in New York City. Folks were shocked when I'd say, what part of the city are you from? And I told them I'm from Oklahoma. But prior to then, I'd only lived in Texas. That's how life works. Take advantage of these opportunities. Let's try this one again. Two six seven. Hello. Yes, two six seven. That's you. Oh, hi there. What's your first name? Um, my name is Sebastian. What do you got for us, Sebastian? Oh well, your live stream kind of like hit me because, to be honest, I'm eighteen and throughout my entire life I've been kind of like a general underachiever. Okay. And I guess, yeah, that sort of introvert was kind of like an excuse to kind of 
hide the fact that, yeah, I'm kind of a loser, to be honest. But uh, it kind of gave me some hope because I realized that, you know, I can change my situation mm -hmm. and that over time with some work that I'm putting into it, like, you know, hiring a tutor and working a job and stuff like that and right. preparing to go back to school pretty soon that, uh, you know, I can change my stuff. And I actually plan on, uh, you know, <laughs> getting rid of all the Jordans and uh, all the other stuff and change up my image and try a style that I never used to mm -hmm. wear before, you know, because I was one of those people who kind of believed in the stereotypes. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of lame to dress like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just a lot of well, mental stuff I'm trying to change. Well, but, let me tell you something. Yeah. Also, at 18, you got a lot of runway left. One of the best things you can do is start surrounding yourself with people who are thinking like the person you want to be. Um, you know, when I hear young men call themselves losers, I'm always like, dude, you got a long way before you're a loser. But it's good to start looking at... Do you, you know, recommend dipping into your IRA when relocating to a new city? I'll get, at I, Kevin. I'll get that in a second. Yeah, when I hear young guys call themselves losers, I understand the sentiment, but understand, you got a lot of runway. Use the time when you're living at home, recalibrating to really stack aside some cash. You want, you know, several months of money to where you don't have to make dumb decisions for money. Um, and whether you decide to go back to school or whether you decide to get into the work environment, just make sure you are working, working, working and staying around like minded guys. The main thing you need to focus on is not getting a chick pregnant before 35 years old and outside of a committed relationship. As long as you remain no kids, you got a lot of options. Obviously, you know, we're talking about a legal thing, but um, yeah, I mean, keep listening. I appreciate it. And I like to hear young guys call in, especially uh, when their life is in flux. So thank you. I got a couple okay. more. Calls. Thank you very much, Kevin. Okay. Bye, -bye. You Bye. Okay. Bye. Shout out to the caller. Um, somebody asked a question about what I recommend dipping into your IRA uh, when relocating to a new city. Um, I, re I what I recommend is if you if you can get a company to pay, you want somebody else to pay for it. So the best thing is to get another company to pay for it, even part of it. However, let's say you're living in a city like uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma, and you're going to a city like Austin, Texas. Uh, yes, get the fuck out. The money you take out of your IRA will be greatly, uh, you will counterbalance that with the reduced cost of living. Let me tell you what I mean by cost of living. A lot of people say Muskogee is cheaper to live in. It's only 82% of the national, national cost of living. Yeah, but if you want to go to a concert, you got to leave. You want to go to a restaurant that's not Red Lobster, you got to leave. The cost of living to me is not how much housing is. The cost of living is how much I have to leave or go other places to do things. That's the cost. It costs to live in a city that's a sleepy town. A lot of places are great places to be happily and successfully married. Though, like the suburbs. they It is horrible to be single in the suburbs. So yes, getting into your IRA to get a better quality of living because you guess what you'll start to level out the cost that's why you see the show friends and people had roommates because new york city was so expensive okay uh we got a oh shit we got a couple more calls 15 minutes in the call queue uh let's see six six seven eight caller what's your first name uh jason Jason, what do you got for us? Um, um, wow, this is a. Uh, I just uh, I, honestly, I just uh, started listening to you about a month ago. Okay. And uh, man, this is, this is one of the realest uh, episodes I've I've really heard from you. It kind of kind of hit me to the heart, man. And um, I just feel bad. like like you were saying. I think I mean I, I really am that guy. You know, I'm I'm 37. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm out here working two two jobs but you know they're 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 not going anywhere mm -hmm. you know um i mean if if the thing is like i, I think it's like i have two personalities like if you really didn't know me in real life people would, would never know but uh mm -hmm. i kind of do man i really do feel like a loser out here man it um uh, 
just just you know just just feel lost you know just feel like i have a i, I can give a, a lot more to than what i'm giving right now but um just uh i don't know man it, but i i, I don't want to ramble but i i just want, really just want to just uh you know just thank you for what you're doing you know and uh i'm gonna be honest when i i i saw your name in, in a in another chat room and when i first you know i went to your instagram and whatnot i was like i mm-hmm. i don't know i just didn't think uh like your style, and I was like, nah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about this guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, ball, I'm man. just being honest. I, yeah. Who is this cornball? I yeah. can't remember this dude. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. yeah, and, and I'm, not, and I hope, I hope you don't take it in a disrespectful tone, man. Yeah. But I, but I, I hope I humble myself, and uh, you've really been helping me out so far. And um, I, I'm just, I'm not gonna lie. Like tonight, I just bought a a, a console, mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully, man. Um, it, it, this this can be the start, man. You know, um, of getting my getting everything getting everything together, man. So, uh, dude, I'm gonna tell you. If you heard my story, you know, so. if you heard my story, and I said shit fell apart in the side of a year, if it can happen for me, it can happen. For you. Right. The first thing you've already you've done something a lot of people won't do. You already called in. First off, you said you you gave you the chance. You didn't just blow off the content because initially my vibe wasn't your vibe. So this is already a positive right. step. So it sounds like your attitude is in the right direction. So, hey, man, keep watching the content, and uh, I look forward to working with you. But this is a good thing, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, All man. Right. So I, I I just, like I said, I just want to say thank you, brother. All right, appreciate it. I got a couple more calls to get to. Guys, we got 12 minutes left to get in the call queue. Thank you, man. Talk to you later. All right, all right. Uh, I think I got my big bro Rob in the call line. Rob, I'm going to get to you right after this one. Uh, 323, caller. What's your first name? Hello? Hello? Caller, 323. Call. Yes, Bernard. Bernard, what you got for us? Bernard. Yeah, um, I just make a. I just want to thank you for what you're doing, you know, um, uplifting, um, edifying, edifying, uh, us guys. Um, I'm 36, um, um, been through a lot, man. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, just to make a long story short, um, right now I'm focusing on, um, I'm on school, you know, going to school right now. Um, plan on being, plan on being, uh, becoming a mechanic, uh, mm-hmm. I worked part time. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes when I was young. Um, had my first child when I was eighteen. Three children. Okay. Uh, part time job. Uh, uh, not living my best life, I would say. Uh, really don't have no friends. Uh, people I thought I was my friends. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm down on my luck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, you and um, um, more like. Uh, I would say, um, you and more, um, other black, um, content providers, man, um, y'all keep doing what you're doing. Um, but I just want to, um, last call up before, um, before last, you know, um, you know, times get rough, you know, it get hard, but, you know, you just got to keep pushing and, um, stay focused. So I'm right now, I'm just trying to stay on my, stay on my purpose mm-hmm. and, you know, hopefully I can see the outcome of everything um you know i'm just i'm really doing bad but i'm I'm focused right now in school and just um working and you know working what i have uh, well here's what you do man yeah. you know if you're in school and you're working part-time it's, it's always hard to get it together when your money's not right so school is a short-term thing so even this part-time thing just what i would say is more than anything else is to stay in positive spaces like the manosphere. Keeping your mind right during this little window is critical because it sounds like you got a lot on your plate right now. So pushing the dollars may not be there, but it's just it's like you're like a, a frog. You hopping from lily pad to lily pad. You ain't going to stay on one too long and just keep in the right place, man. But I appreciate you calling in, fam. I got a couple more calls to get to. And I'll stay in contact, man. Love to hear brother's story and see how it progresses. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Guys, you know, and that's, that's what's up, guys. Everybody's story is a little bit different. Uh, 
And I'll tell the story about how I was going through cancer and chemo. Um, getting that mind right is the first step in everything. There's no way my life would have changed the way it did if my mind wasn't in the right direction. Because I look at how far I had fallen and how far I had gone. It amazed people around me, friends and family. But you know what? It didn't amaze me so much as, as uh, I thought it would because I knew that if I just kept doing what I was doing, things were going to turn. 901 caller, what's your first name? Robert, brother. What's going on, what's Kevin? What's up, big bro? What you got for us? What's going on, brother? Uh, I know you ain't got that much time, but like I said, these last two brothers, I want to say it to y'all. Look, brother, you made the first step. Both of y'all. You admitted I'm tired. That's the only way change happens. You have to say, man, I'm tired. Then you, the second step you made, you came to a brother that is reaching out to you. A lot of times it's me and we got to put our pride aside. We got to admit, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, man, I'm messed up out here on the town. I'm not living my best life. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing that you got to do. And sometimes you got to come to brothers that you feel. And sometimes, like he said, through your content, he realizes now, this brother know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So open yourself up to learn something. Now, at 37 years of age, you know what I'm saying? We got to be real. All of our money ain't right. Just like your story about counsel. Mm -hmm. Hell, I grew up in the projects. Right. You know what I'm saying? So did I. I got a little change in my pocket now. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I got a little change in my pocket now. So what I'm trying to tell these brothers is you got to stay on your path. When the brother was talking about he had friends, understand something, brother. You came in this world by yourself. You're going to leave by yourself. You're going to have friends, all friendships at expiration dates. Stay on your path. You know what you need to do to have a better life. Go ahead, Kevin. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No. All right, brother. Um, stay on your path, brother. You know, you want a better life. And the only way you're going to have that better life is you do it. You don't go by what your friends say. Mm -hmm. You don't go by what your family says. You do not allow what happened in your past to keep you stuck. Like you said, on the litter pad, you're jumping from litter pad to litter pad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, man, you got to steal your body and move your mind around. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us, like you said, you, you go to a new city. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but you got to remember, going to a new city, I agree with you that. Go to a new city, a fresh start, a new way of thinking. But you always got to remember, get your mind right. Because if your mind ain't right, you leave this city and you move to Dallas, you're the same person in Dallas. If you go to New York, we talking about New York City. Everybody in New York City is moving. They hustling. Mm. So if your mind ain't about to hustle, you ain't about having, you ain't about having a better life, you're going to be even more miserable because up there, people ain't got time. Boy. Everybody's on their path, brother. Boy, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Now you, like, you said, like you said, he wants to be a mechanic. Go to school, be a mechanic. Mm. Take care of your children the best way you know how. That's mm. the first thing you do. Don't sweat the money. Don't sweat the don't sweat the noise. You got to learn how to tune that noise out. Tune that noise what, what, out, bro. Do you have a parakeet? And go on. So, yeah, yeah, I got some parakeets. Yeah, I'm going. I, I, I know, know they. So, it's so funny. I, I, I'm, I, no, I'm a bird dude. I grew up with birds. So I'm like, that's not like a you, parakeet or a budgie. Because you sitting there talking, he talking. To I got two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I told y'all I knew birds, man. But like I said. Man, like I said, brothers, I, those brothers, even though I came in late because I was doing my thing on Facebook, right. them two brothers touched me. Mm -hmm. They really did, man. I, I could hear it in their voice. They tired. Right. Brothers, just what just, you come into this atmosphere. Come to men that are not tired. We've been tired, but we're not tired anymore. We know who we are. Mm -hmm. Come and talk to us, brothers, and we're going to put you on the path that you're supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. we, we done been to your... Everybody's story is different, but we all been messed up, brother. That's it. Like I said, I was a I was a poor boy growing up. You know what I'm saying? But I'm on my path as a man. I know what I'm supposed to do. My my purpose is to help other men and other people. Hey, That's man. my purpose. That's what I'm trying to build. Hey man, what are you doing Sunday? About uh, are you on Eastern or are you on St Central? <laughs> uh, I'm 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 um, I'm six Central. I own that time. I'm, I'm six central. Okay. 
Maybe we get I think I'm off. I think I'm off. Go ahead. I was gonna say I'm on the Central Standard Time. I don't know if your your part of Tennessee is Eastern. Uh, Want to see if we can get you on the show Sunday? Okay, I, I, I'll be here because, like I said, I believe we are on the same time. Because when I had came to Oklahoma that time, I think we are on the same. I don't think it's no too much of a different yeah, uh, time frame or anything let's go like ahead and that. Try to schedule the show, I'm, and I'm gonna tell you what the title of it is. Are you tired yet? Okay, brother. Let me let you get. No, the, yeah. the title of the show. I'm gonna let you get some of these other brothers. Okay, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Shout out to the big bro, uh, Rob, Memphis Finest. Uh, Sunday night show, gentlemen. Sunday night show. Title is going to be Are You Tired Yet? Host going to be Big Brother Robert Lee of Black Sox Incorporated. Are you tired yet? Last couple of callers. Go ahead and co sign on what Big Bro Rob said. You can hear the brothers, they tired. Men get tired. We get tired. God, we get tired. And don't nobody give a damn. The folks you think will give a damn don't give a damn. Sometimes your kids don't even give a damn. <laughs> and in the face of such hurt, heartbreak, rejection, confusion. A lot of men are just out here lost. And waking up every day is a miracle. Some people go to sleep and will be all right with not waking up. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to admit it. They don't want us to admit that Every day is just torture. Torture of an unfulfilled heart, an empty soul, and just the life that's vacuous and seems devoid of meaning. But, you know, Places like what we're building on the manosphere, you know, when I came to YouTube, I, I'd never planned on live streaming. My, my channel was is style, and you see what it is. But, but one thing you can say is... 90 seconds. I have lived. I have lived life, and I believe when guys are reaching out to each other and we are talking to each other, there is not only... Healing, there is Thank growth. you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. There's not only healing, there is... There's not only healing, there is growth. And some of you guys may not be in this position. Bookmark this stream. Come back to it when you hit it. Every man gets tired. But the question is... Hearing all this at a young age is really moving and motivating. Shout out CIA. That's what's up, David. Bookmark this. Because life comes in cycles. And because we as men lack men to wave us on down the path of life, we don't know where we're at. We don't know if we're good or bad or above or below. We just don't know. And because it's impolitic for men to admit they don't know something, most guys are just shamed into shutting up and shutting down. And all that makes you is some a battery for somebody else to use. And I got no problem with society needing men to do what we do, but I want you to enjoy your life. It's yours. It's only one. And whether it's Popeye's with a, Two-Piece Tuesdays, whether it's fried fish or whether it's lobster, I, I want it to be yours. You decide to get married, uh, uh, have kids, I want your your family to th revolve and thrive as, as you at the head, not you as a beast of burden. I want men to sit around 
and get their accolades when they're in the ground. We need to start giving brothers their awards, men their awards today. Men need to start giving those things to each other. So Sunday, we're going to talk about, are you tired yet? But you know, this channel is not one to just leave an open-ended question because as much as I'm going to give you the question, I'm going to say, then what are you ready to do about it? Are you tired yet? I'm encouraged because, like I said, I've seen younger brothers. I've seen older brothers. I've seen brothers in the mix of it. And we got something going around here that has never happened before in the history of human communication. Men can actually congregate in like-minded spaces and embolden and fill up and prop up and stand up and demand more and expect men to not only patch you up, but get you back out there, not just to be in it, but to win. To a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I mean, like, I remember when I saw this cat in that space and now look, he's doing big things. I remember when I was here and now I'm there. And you can actually do it for yourself and then do it for somebody else. I said before and I said again, when men are the best version of themselves, the world is a better place. Start with making your world the better place. So where even if you are eating a hungry man or a Swanson's dinner, it's because you want to eat it. If you're watching TV, you got a smile on your face because you choose to be where you are. No longer a victim of circumstance. You are where you are because this is where you want to be and you are the captain of your fate you are the captain of your soul. You are the master of your fate. Gentlemen, it is up to you. Your circumstance, your situation, your past, your, your pedigree, your history is all that. It's in the past. You choose to bring all that forward. You can also choose to not just bring forward the lessons. I'm not taking any calls anymore. The, the phone line is down. Um, I appreciate you guys calling in. Uh, let me go ahead and check something real quick. Shout out to the CIA, confident, intelligent, assertive. Shout out to the FBI, feminine, beautiful, inspirational. Ladies, you have a part to play in this thing too. Shout out to me. One love to all my modern, sexy savages. Thank you, guys. Till next time, I will talk at you later. Peace.